Hey everyone, my name is Root and we are here. This is going to be week number 7, I believe, of the ICBA. And uh, this match had to be played quite a bit late. Uh, it was actually a huge, huge mix-up in terms of scheduling. So I actually had to play my week 9 because uh, my week 9 had to play really, really early. Then I played my week 8 the day after that. And then a couple days after that, I'm playing this match in my week 7. Uh, and this is going to be up against Melantosh, and we have a really interesting matchup here. So he obviously has a couple of mons that can kind of do a lot of damage to my team. Um, however, my Tapu Lele actually matches up decently well against him. Uh, a lot of his bigger threats, although uh, it's going to take a lot of pivoting, it's going to take a lot of work, especially uh, a Giratina is always going to be scary no matter what happens. It's actually going to be the, my first matchup with Togetic. Uh, as well, but I do just have like a nasty plotting Thunderous, some pretty standard defensive Togetic and uh, Almamola, an Assault Vested Rotom, and just a Flame Plate Infernape as well, and a pretty standard uh, Tapu Lele as well. But uh, you can see he has a really scary Seismitoad, a very scary Volcarona, and I have been beaten by Volcarona on its own in the past. So there's a lot to think about here, but I'm just going to get into the matchup here. Um... It's going to be a lot of trying to manage his threats, but uh, I do like the way that my team matches up again. So he's, he's going to lead off with uh, his Scizor, and I'm going to lead off with my Thunderous. Now, my Thunderous comes out here, and I'm thinking there's really not much stopping me from setting up a nasty plot turn one and just building dents into his team like i'm not expecting this to 6-0 sweep his team but this is really going to build a lot of dents into his team or at the very least cause him to reveal something earlier than he would normally want to so he's gonna uh he's going to mega evolve and i'm gonna assume that he's gonna u-turn out because he's not bullet punching or anything like that but regardless i resist both of his stabs and u-turn still does a respectable amount as he goes out into whatever he wants after he just saw me set up a nasty plot because i, I had to go first prankster and he goes into nido king now this immediately screams scarf nido king to me um and nido king is really the only thing that truly truly is stopping my uh thunderous from really doing a whole lot of damage in this matchup but uh we do just kind of have to take a sludge wave with my rotom and uh we take it decently well but it's a crit which immediately just makes me kind of think that uh that's going to be one less hit that my rotom is going to be able to take throughout this matchup but uh i am able to fire off a shadow ball and shadow ball is doing super respectable damage so uh, just based off of the damage that he's doing to my Assault Vested Rotom and the, and the damage that my Assault Vested Rotom is doing back to him, we can already pretty much confirm Scarf. I mean, it's not 1000% sure, he could always just have something crazy up his sleeve, but uh, the way that he's playing it and the kind of damage that it was doing kind of makes me think Scarf. So right off the bat, he goes off into his Seismito to kind of take some hits because I think he knows as much as anybody that um, his Nido King is going to kind of be a potential win con for him in this later match. So I end up going into my Togetic and to eat this Toxic, I fully expected him to, to collect Toxic in this moment. Um, and this was the most uh, Toxicable Mon, because, uh, if that's a word. But uh, this Mon can at least roost up, right? It's never going to be great, but uh, this Togetic is really meant to take a few hits. Um, Pivot out with the baton pass, so he's just out. Uh, he's trying to fear. He probably fears uh, a counter toxic or something to that effect. But I knew that he would want to um, not want to let his Simon Hood get toxic. Or at the very least, he has some very easy switches in, like the Nido King, that can pretty much take whatever hit I would uh, have, whatever offensive move that I would have. So I baton pass back into my Rotom to try to deal some more damage and. Uh, it really did just kind of allow in his seismic toad, but there, there really wasn't much that I could do about it in this moment. Um, honestly, looking back at it, I maybe could have doubled into Tapu Lele, but that would have been such an aggressive hard read. Like, I felt that he was going to switch out, but I didn't really capitalize on that read as much as I should have. Um, but thinking back on it, that's probably the better play every time i end up going back into my lele and or into my lele and he ends up just setting up rocks uh which is going to limit my uh toka tick which is pretty unfortunate but it's also just going to limit him around because he, uh he can see how much we've been switching around already so he's able to go back out into his mega scissor and i get off a psychic i just figured that whatever damage i can get with this lele uh just psychicking psychicking things would be ideal in this moment and uh actually so i'm i'm expert belted i believe with hidden power fire and it looked like hidden power fire was going to be a role in the situation and i think he maybe knew that it was going to be a role so he immediately switches out he didn't even want he didn't even want to risk a, a u-turn or anything like that um but he sets up a nasty plot i gave him the psychic terrain and he sets up a nasty plot which is super duper scary and i ended up missing a toxic now this uh miss toxic is actually going to be 
pretty huge at this point. It's generally going to be pretty huge at this point. So he's able to Psychic me and just straight up KO me. Psychic Terrain plus two Stab Psychic is going to do a whole heck lot of damage. Um, and I'm able to go into my Togetic. And so now my Togetic is going to be in a position where I'm forced to have to try to Toxic him now and hopefully take a hit and land it. We take a hit decently well. And uh, we take it well enough that I'm pretty positive I could have roost all this thing for a decent amount of time. Let him get toxic. Uh, or let him take the toxic damage and let it rack up um and ultimately end this interaction decently well but just the fact that um alma mola missed the hit and it kind of just forces my togetic to go down for nothing but man togetic was in a potential situation to uh roost all this thing down to where the Mew gets KO'd on its own, or at the very least, I can come in and claim a KO with my Infernape. As it stands, my Infernape has to come in. Uh, uh, well, first of all, I had to assess what, what my most active Mon is, and I bring in the Infernape, uh, and I and I knew that uh, even Flame Play Flare Blitz wasn't going to do enough, but I it's like I said, it's my most active Mon. I needed to, I needed that damage, and I needed it to take another round of um, Toxic, and I needed to be able to bring in my Thunders to take this Revenge KO. This, like, I... I knew the sequence of events. I knew how the sequence of events would have to play out, but uh, there wasn't really much else that I could do. We put a Dark Pulse this thing away, but at this point, there is really nothing left to stop a Scarf Needle King at this point. So, uh, we were talking a lot after this match ended, and we basically pretty much agreed that uh, I kind of had a path to win, but as soon as I missed that Toxic and... Um, I wasn't able to get out of this 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 entire interaction with Mew with my Infernape intact that pretty much sealed my chances of ever being able to win up this match. So here was what we kind of agreed on, right? My Infernape and my Thunderous could have dealt a lot of damage to his team. It potentially takes out the Volcarona. Um, he he potentially tries to pivot around with with, with the Volcarona. Um, and if I get like half HP onto the Giratina. And if I can get some some extra damage onto the Scizor, right? Uh, and I can get one hit off onto the Giratina, if the Giratina is at, say, half HP. Then, um, he, he was telling me that he was playing this entire match, assuming that my Infernape like, pretty much had to be Scarfed. And, uh, spoiler alert, my Infernape was not Scarfed. But, the fact that he was playing around my Infernape as if it was Scarfed, um... It really put myself in a really great position to be able to catch something off guard. So between this pool of Seismitoad, Volcarona, Scizor, and a little bit of damage onto the Giratina, as long as my Thunderous and my Infernape together could deal with two of those Mons and then uh, be able to get some damage off onto the Giratina, then, like I said, he was assuming that my Infernape was Scarfed. If he's ever in a position where I'm able to Shadow Claw the Giratina, say, for half of its HP, be able to take that out then he might assume that i'm scarfed and he feels safe enough to go into seismitoad right and then that's when i could reveal that i'm not scarfed and i can go for the grass knot ko seismitoad and then from there if i can orchestrate some sort of a situation where say at that point he just has the scissor in the back with the needle king then my inferno can obviously deal with the scissor and it would kind of bait out the needle king in a way all i would really have to do is put the needle king in a position where even if it's just either my infernape and my rotom let's say then he's not able to lock into earth power which means that he would have to lock in a sludge wave and my infernape potentially takes a sludge wave so from there if he's not able to lock into a move that ko's both the rotom and the infernape then i can potentially deal with the needle king in some way but uh like i said missing that toxic was unfortunate i think um i don't even mind losing to you too much obviously melon's a fantastic player he's proven uh his his analytic skills in the gba and uh his battling skills just all over the place but uh it just kind of didn't feel great having my ability having any ability to to kind of try to outplay him in this later game taken away from me by that toxic miss and as i was saying like this entire scenario we, we agreed it was pretty tenuous a lot had to go right for me and i had to make like pretty much every right read on melon's play but like i said even in the middle of the match i felt like i saw the end the light at the end of the tunnel i felt like i saw that end game in my head and i was kind of visualizing it in my head like even as the match was going on and uh, no matter how bad of a position I was in, I felt like I could have been able to pull that off. 
again, if a lot of things ha had gone my way, but uh, like I said, just the fact that um, any opportunity to be able to pull that off was kind of taken away from me from that toxic miss. It was an unfortunate loss. Uh, I was on a bit of a streak and I would really like to have been able to play out the rest of this match, but uh, that's going to be our week seven. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the ICBA, with more UPL weeks, with more weeks of this uh, league war that's going on, and uh, probably some other projects coming up really, really soon. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be once again out.